G'day folks, Luke Fitzpatrick here. I hope you're having a cracking start to 2019. Well, today's video is all about jigging lures over shallow reefs here on the Fraser Coast. And I'm also gonna talk about how this bad boy, the good old Minn Kota, helped me score some magical table fish this week. Stay tuned, I really hope you enjoy it. Now folks, when I'm talking about shallow inshore reefs, uh, I'm talking about locations which are not too far away from the Orangan Boat Harbour. In particular, um, just out in the start of the bay itself, there's quite a few reefy areas out there. And there's also quite a few uh, good pieces of ground through the channels that feed into and out of the northern end of the Great Sandy Strait. Now, I've made a video previously about drifting over some of these reefs, and I'll put the link for that video in the description below, so that you can have a look at this one. For today, I'm gonna to concentrate on actually fishing in these uh, channels, um, because they do actually present a little bit of a challenge. Um, just imagine that the volume of water when you have a big tide moving through these areas they're quite narrow there's a lot of water moving and when you get wind against tide it can become quite tricky oh, 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 oh. Ah, he's off. Now one of the first things I've noticed while I've been out drifting around and anchor locking with my Minn Kota over these reefy areas is the fish's behavior in the picture we have in front of us, the tide is moving from right to left. And what I generally find when that's occurring, say we've got an incoming tide, is the fish will sit on one side of the structure, basically protecting themselves from the high volume of water moving uh, past. Basically, they're conserving energy, sitting in, tucked in behind the structure, and they'll jump out and ambush stuff as it comes past. Now, the other thing I notice is when you have a slack tide or a change in tide, think of low tide period or high tide period, the fish move away from the structure a little bit, and sometimes they'll basically start you know, circling the structure. They'll venture out a little bit further because it's a bit easier for them to do in search for a feed, okay? Of course, when the tide completely changed direction, so now we're moving from left to right, so the tide is heading out, the fish generally go and find themselves a nice protected spot on the other side of the structure. Now, this isn't true for all species. There are some species like cod and coral trout and things which will be finding themselves buried in little holes and things in the structure, and they generally won't move too much, but for snapper and nanagai and other species like that, they generally move around the structure and find places out of the water's flow, so to speak. Now, the best way to find out where all this structure is, is to Google it, because there's quite a few publicly known GPS marks throughout the Great Sandy Strait. But I reckon that nothing can beat time on water, where you basically move around using your sounder to identify structure. And when you find one little patch, spend a bit of time sort of heading around a few hundred meters around it to work out if there's any other pieces of structure in the area, and also to try and work out where the fish are actually holding. Now, of course, when you find a fishy looking spot, lots of fish light up on your sander, the next challenge is trying to hold yourself above these fish so that you can get a lure or bait down on them. As I've mentioned before, drifting across some of these reefs, I've covered in a previous video. The link is in the description below. However, today I'm going to talk about using the Minn Kota, deploying the Minn Kota to hold you above where you've identified fish are holding. And it's an absolute fantastic device. It's got a spot lock function, which basically uses GPS signal to hold you within a few meters of where you actually press the button. So instead of having to deploy an anchor and getting the angles right with water flow and all that sort of stuff, you can just basically deploy the encoder, make sure you're well, well and truly above your target, hit spot lock, and it will pretty much keep you in that location.
the next challenge is getting your jig or your bait down to where the fish are. Now for this video, I'm purely going to concentrate on using jigs and soft plastics and things like that. I'm not going to concentrate on using bait purely because I don't use bait too much. However, one of the big challenges we've got is the tidal movement, the water movement. So in this case, it's moving from right to left. And in those deep water channels and the northern part of the Great Sandy Strait, it moves like an absolute rocket ship sometimes. So you will find that you drop your jig down and it just gets caught in the current. And before you know it, it's over there somewhere. And you've got no idea if you're actually on the bottom or, or what's going on. The other option is you can use a bucket of lead in your jig head or a massive, you know, 300 gram jig or whatever, and you can drop it straight down and you'll get there, but it will go with a thud. And every time you lift it up and down, you'll just go thud, 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 not look very natural and may or may not work. So as mentioned, it is a bit of a challenge to get the weight right to get your jig down to the bottom. And this is purely trial and error. I find for myself, I use 40, 60, 80, up to 100 gram jigs. And I basically start with the 40s and I work out whether that's actually getting down effectively. If it doesn't, I retie on a 60 and then an 80. For the video today, I was using 60 gram jigs to get them down in about 15 meters of water. And I was an hour either side of the low tide. Now, there's a couple of ways I was using them. I was casting them up current and letting them drift down. They were getting caught in the current, but they were coming back down over my target area. And once I felt them on the bottom, I was very gently just lifting them up and they were hopping. Now, the reason they're moving right to left, it wasn't anything I was doing. It was purely the water current that was taking it along. All I was doing with my rod tip was going up and down, hopping it along the bottom and sometimes giving it a double hop or a triple hop, sometimes winding the handle a couple of times to get that lure sort of jumping up, looking like a wounded bait fish. And what I'd find is I'd take a couple of hops and then I'd get roughly to my target area and then I'd get the strike on the fish. Sometimes it would go all the way through and I wouldn't get anything and I'd have to let a bit of line out and then all of a sudden I wouldn't feel the bottom anymore. I'd just feel the jig floating around in the current and I'm sort of jigging like this and it wasn't really achieving anything so I'd bring it back, recast and do it again. There you go folks, I'm all done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember, if you wanna be kept up to date with all the new videos that are coming out, please hit that subscribe button. If you really, really enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below to let me know. All the best, and I really do hope to see you out on the water one day.